Nigeria has the largest gas reserves in Africa and the gas pipeline industry has been in operation in the country since the discovery of gas in the 1960s. The lack of sufficient gas development infrastructure has caused a severe energy imbalance, making the country rely on the few existing pipelines, a situation which leaves the nation vulnerable to any shock on these pipelines. The Nigerian government, by instituting the National Gas Master Plan, resolved to build new gas pipelines across the nation as part of its plan to maximize gas utilization nationwide. In achieving the National Gas Master Plan, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation NNPC, in May 2012 awarded the contract for the construction of the East-West Gas Transmission Pipeline, popularly called the OB3 Gas Pipeline Project, to two indigenous companies. The 130 km by 48 inches pipeline, the biggest ever built in Nigeria, will transmit gas from the east to the west to meet the demand for power generation and other industrial purpose. Foremost and leading indigenous EPC company, Oil Serve Limited, a company incorporated in 1992, won the bid, which was adjudged to be exhaustively competitive for the engineering procurement, construction, installation and commissioning of the 67 km Lot B part of the project, which begins from the Intermediate Pigin Station IPS, at Omokwata in Delta State and terminates at the Obenod in Edo State. The Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Oil Serve Group, Engineer Emeka Okwosa, explains the OB3 project. OB3 project, uh, first let us understand what OB3 actually means. OB3 is um, a short form of saying Obiafo, Obricon, Oben. That's why you have three OBs, OB3. It's a pipeline that commences at uh, Obiafo, Obricon, that is in River State, transverses Delta State and ends up at Oben in uh, Edo State. Um, and this pipeline is a pipeline that interconnects, it's part of the interconnecting pipeline uh, from east to west. And as it is, it is a, a major part of uh, the gas master plan. And it's a 48 inch diameter pipeline which has the capacity uh, to carry up to 2 billion standard cubic feet of gas a day. I also have uh, the parent company today. It's an EPC IC company uh, that is involved in uh, pipeline uh, construction, uh, from engineering, of course, to construction, commissioning, and then, of course, the maintenance. Uh, and um, OISA has been in existence since 1995. Uh, it's arguably the very first Nigerian indigenous EPC company. Uh, prior to OISAV coming into existence, you had smaller companies that had only construction capability and nothing else. Uh, we also started as a construction company and grew the company uh, by developing uh, uh, capacity, developing uh, not just uh, uh, physical uh, in terms of equipment, but human capacity. And uh, that has been reflected in the capacity of OISAV. The work scope include the construction of Intermediate Pigin Station IPS, installation of a gas treatment plant GTP with control building, cathodic protection system ground bed, complete engineering design handled by Frazimex, an oil serve subsidiary, provision of all materials, plant and equipment, preparation of material takeoff, crossing of three major rivers using the Horizontal Directional Drilling Technology HDD, crossing of 14 major roads using the Thrust Boring Mechanism, crossing of third-party flow lines and railways, provision of SCADA and telecommunications systems, electrical and instrumentation works, hookup and tie-in, earth and associated civil works, testing and commissioning. Engineer Wite Falade Group Chief Operating Officer, Oil Serve Group, 
sheds more light. What the OP3 gas pipeline does is to bridge potential production from the eastern and south-south side and to be able to evacuate it to appropriate points where it can be dispatched to either the western flank of the country or the northern flank of the country. So it's one of those strategic pipelines that will help the flow of gas molecules in the Nigerian domestic space. As you rightly said, it's the biggest diameter inch pipeline system. Um, first is the technical capability to work with a line pipe of that size, uh, having the complement of equipment, having the complement of human skills and human capabilities to be able to do the necessary. Uh, one of the major challenging aspects of delivering this project is that it traverses different geographical terrains. Uh, so along the route where we are uh, laying the pipelines, we've got plain firm lands, we've got rocky terrains, uh, we've got river crossings, we've got road crossings and other such crossings. So the ability to create a transport corridor in spite of these geographical obstacles and to do it with advanced technologies that include horizontal directional drilling and thrust boring is a major issue and that speaks to scale, it speaks to capital, it speaks to experience, it speaks to balance sheet of the uh, EPC contracting firm which we are. So th those are the immediate challenges. Of course there are more remote challenges that task our capacity in terms of community management, stakeholder management, uh, being able to ensure that we obtain the necessary permits, we in the course of this project had to work with security forces, had to work with local communities, had to work with state governments, with regulatory agencies to get the necessary licenses to operate that would allow us to be able to build the pipeline. So it's a mixture of technical, commercial, financial, human, stakeholder management. Those are the challenges. But those are typical challenges for us, for a company of our size and stature. Those are things we deal with and we are happy to do this over and over again. To build a 48-inch pipeline requires enormous capacity anywhere in the world. Uh, you may wish to know that this is the largest size gas pipeline existing in Africa. Uh, and of course, Nigeria being a major uh, oil and gas uh, uh, country uh, has never had a 48-inch diameter pipeline. So the main reason has to do with our ability our capacity and our proven knowledge uh, in delivery of such pipelines. Uh, we've built hundreds of kilometers of pipelines prior to this. Uh, started first building pipelines for Shell uh, and then built for other IOCs. Uh, went on to build for Oendo, the Lagos uh, pipeline system, in four phases. We've, we've completed those starting from 2001 up to recently. Uh, in four phases. And we've done also the longest pipeline in the south-south from Okanafu, um, that is uh, the age, uh, the, the, the western edge of Akwa Ibom State, going all the way to Mfamosing, past Calabar, which is uh, the eastern edge of a uh, cross river, uh, transversing all manners of terrain. So you can see the capacity that has been built over time, and that is reflected in uh, our being able to build OB3. But the process, as you stated, uh, was quite, quite rigorous. It took actually two years to complete that process. And um, I believe strongly that the client uh, is very happy with us. So far, about 95% of the total work scope for Lot B has been achieved. Presently, the civil works for the gas treatment plant on a five hectare is ongoing. The water bath heaters slug catchers and vent scrubbers for the gas treatment plant have been deployed to site in preparation for installation. Uh, the project can be divided roughly into two uh, parts, the pipeline system and the, um, what do you call it, the above ground facilities. OB3 project Lot B is 65.13 kilometers by 48 inch and has three above-ground facilities. The first one is Intermediate Peaking Station at Omokwata. 
Then at Oben, we have what we call the gas treatment plant, uh, which is going to be the biggest gas treatment plant in Nigeria that has the capacity to process and treat 2 billion scoff of gas per day. And finally, we have the, the, um, the Oben uh, station. So these two parts of the project, the pipeline system is largely completed, is undergoing pre-commissioning right now. And then the above ground facilities, the three of them, we are virtually done with the civil. The remaining lab is to do the mechanical, and then we'll start the pre-commissioning of the entire project. For you, the first step to do is to do the civil, where is the equipment foundation plant, where they, they will place the equipment. Once that is done and is cured, you place the equipment. Thereafter, you start linking the equipment so that they can work as a unit. So that's the basis. So for us, the equipment will have them. Um, once the civil is done, which will be done by, by this time, I mean in a few weeks' time, we will start the mechanical installation. And once we start mechanical, it goes hand in hand with electrical instrumentation. Thereafter, we move into the call, the pre-commissioning of the above ground, and then the entire pipeline system pre-commissioning and commissioning. We have deployed some key technologies that have made it easy for us to deliver this project. One is the uh, horizontal directional drilling system whereby for river crossings we can now drill under the, the riverbed without creating any environmental hazard uh, trying to do it the, the, the conventional method which is to dredge across. Um, that also means that we can deploy these pipes in a safer manner. Uh, another technology we've deployed of course is the uh, is the truss boring system for major road crossings. Uh, instead of doing uh, open cutting of roads, we truss board and um, pass the pipes under the road without disturbing the flow of traffic. And then uh, the other one that is quite meaningful for you to, to know is the issue of our welding. We have the best welding system today, the automatic and the semi-automatic welding systems that enabled us to weld as much as 24 to 25 joints of 48-inch pipeline a day. Uh, previous record has always been between four joints to six joints by major pipeline construction company, most of them international, uh, for diameters of up to 42 inches. Uh, but nobody, of course, has built 48 in Nigeria for gas, but we went on to achieve this rate, and that gave us an edge and made us to be able to complete this project on time. In April 2017, a performance review team from the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, NCDMB, visited the site to review the local content compliance by OilServe. Also, on Saturday, March 3, 2018, the Senate Committee on Gas, led by its chairman, Senator Basi Albert Akban, and the Managing Director, Nigerian Gas Processing and Transportation Company, NGPTC, Tunde Bakare, paid a visit to the site to see for themselves the extent of work done so far. Their first port of call was the Intermediate Pigin Station, IPS, at Omokwata in Delta State, from where they proceeded to the gas treatment plant at Obenod, and then to the project camp at Eviosi in Edo State. We are at the, well, the Lord B site. The contract, like I said yesterday, was awarded to Nature's Oil South. It's a 65 kilometer by 48 inch. Uh, actually, it's, a, it's two seconds. The first uh, 48 kilometer is a 48 inch, and the last 72 kilometer is 36 inch. Where we're coming from is called the IPS. That's the starting point for this segment. And here is the terminal station where the fat gas is further the process. Through all the equipment we have uh, seen, you can see that the sidewalk is ongoing. And it will then be transported and injected at where we call the uh, Uben uh, node. Where we are, it's called Uben Gas and Treatment Plant. So basically, uh, it's self evident that this. Uh, lot B has prepared significantly more than uh, lot A, but with a uh, schedule optimization, we 
to be able to uh, align both uh, plots and achieve our target date of uh, completion by July 20. And on behalf of the Senate, we are very impressed and uh, we are very impressed with all staff. And it gives us hope as a country that we are making tremendous uh, progress. I think like the MD NGC has said earlier, that this is a game changer. And um, I, have very, I have very strong hope that Nigeria truly has come of age because this is a clear demonstration of indigenous capacity. That's, very, that's quite fundamental. That we can begin to do these things in Nigerian way is what encourages us as a, as, as a people. When we come out like this, this is the only platform that we have to let Nigerians know that things are, things are working in the oil and gas sector. We cannot talk about the diversification of our economy without power. And there cannot be any power without gas, gas infrastructure. Gas. That's the foundation. So I believe that as a committee, what we are driving here is how we can drive and enhance the use of domestic gas. Because gas is just around our country. But every other product is put into this country. So let us use what we have to actually achieve exactly what we want to achieve. So we are very impressed with this company and this is why we encourage NNPC to award even the AKK to all sides. You know, and uh, because the company has made tremendous uh, progress. So we have no complaints here. We are very impressed and I want to encourage uh, NNPC through NGC, to the Bakari, the MD, not to rest in their hours. Because we as National Assembly, we are ensuring that whatever money is appropriated for, achieve the desired uh, objective. So we are pursuing the money that we, we have brought. And we have come here, we have seen, and we are living with a better impression of ourselves. They were very, very much impressed. They never believed that any Nigerian company, an indigenous company, could be that good and have that capacity to undertake this size of uh, project. And then looking at it also and seeing the fact that we are just at the tail end, meeting our timeline, I mean, they were quite impressed. Oil Serve Limited has also executed and delivered many other projects using high quality and safety standards. Such projects include the Aloji Gas Transmission Pipeline System for Nigerian Gas Processing and Transportation Company, NGPTC, Greater Lagos Phase 4 Gas Distribution Network System for GasLink Nigeria Limited, the National Integrated Power Project, NIPP, Lot 1 and 2, Ihovo, Egbema, and Bahrain for the Niger Delta Power Holding Company, NDPHC. Others are the Oron Gas Transmission Pipeline System for Scepter Energy, the Akute Independent Power Project for Oando Gas and Power, the South South Gas Transmission Pipeline System for East Horizon Gas Company Limited, the Gas Transmission Pipeline System for Geometric Power Aba Limited, complete upgrade of Ikeja Metering Station for NGPTC, just to mention a few. OilServe showcased its expertise in delivering these projects at the Offshore Technology Conference OTC 2018 in Houston, Texas, which was largely attended by oil and gas professionals from Nigeria and across the world. The group managing director, NNPC, Dr. Meikantibaru, who declared the Nigerian pavilion open, lauded the company for its cutting-edge technology and timely delivery of projects when he paid a visit to oil serve booth. Oil service provider that has integrated services uh, in the Nigerian oil and gas industry. And the big exhibition we're putting together is an encouragement for all the others, all the other service providers to do the same. So congratulate you on that and as you are leader to the part, we are committed to encouraging local participation and service providers in the industry. So I use this opportunity to thank Dr. Mike Antibaru, who has for a long time, even before he became GMD, been building capacity in Tinian PC and also encouraging the local participation in the oil and gas industry. Oil serve is a testimony to that. Many companies here are testimonies to that. And uh, all we can say is that Peter appreciates and the uh, support of Peter is actually a support of the oil industry and you're doing it more and more.
ISAF has been able to move to this level purely because we decided at the very beginning to set up a system that has international standard, that has a focus and the mission and clear vision to be the best. Today, I think we, by and large we are close to what we wanted to do, but I can tell you clearly that OISAV has achieved all this because we set out with clear vision, we set out with determination to work hard, we set out with determination to build capacity, we set out to be able to perform at a level where we know that at all times our clients will be satisfied with our jobs. And we are not ending there, we keep growing and we keep developing. Oil Serve is working assiduously to ensure the OB3 project is completed and delivered to client by July 2018.